Hey you alright team, welcome back to a new video. Sorry it's been about seven days since I posted, but here we go. Today we're gonna to be talking about combat medic and how you can become a paramedic within the British Army. So a short video then on the Royal Army Medical Corps. There's many different roles that you can go down. I'm just going to be doing a short video on the combat medic, uh, but I will quickly now just cover some of the other roles. So you do have HCA, which is healthcare assistant. I don't really know much about them, but we'll be doing a future video on them in the future. You've also got a nurse, an ODP, but with a nurse, I do know if you join the British Army as a nurse, you will complete phase one at either Winchester, Purbro or Harrogate if you're a junior soldier. When completing phase one, you will then do your phase two at Birmingham University for three years where you go and get your nursing degree. So you pretty much go to uni for three years, you're still getting paid by the army. When you finish university, you then uh, pick up your corporal, so you'll be a full corporal. You then do some sort of like NCO carder just to make you sure you got like the leadership skills for a corporal and then you go off to hospital and work as a nurse. So that's all paid for by the British Army. So that's how you become a nurse within the British Army. So phase one will, will be the same for a medic. That's either Purbrook, Winchester or Harrogate as a junior soldier. And then you're gonna go off to DMS Whittington for six months where you're then gonna complete your class twos. It used to be the combat medical technician class two course. It's now called the future medic course. So you're gonna complete that. It's sort of basic levels into battlefield um, casualty trauma, but you also do get placements away um, at field hospitals and with the NHS in there. So that does sound pretty uh, good. Uh, but by the end of that, all the, um, you're expected to be able to do is do a head to toe assessment of a trauma casualty and based on your observation, you should be able to diagnose them from observations such as breathing rate, blood pressure and then anything else you see on the casualty. You don't get much um, face to face once you leave phase two and go off. So when you leave phase two, you then go off to a field regiment. Uh, you won't be attached to any other regiment. You actually go to a field medical regiment and you don't get much hands on. You're, you're supervised quite a bit, but this is only for around six to 12 months. And then you go off to do your class ones. And then that's where it seems to get a little bit more exciting from the information I've read and the people I've spoken to. Your class one then confirms basically that you're happy um, and you've got all the skills that you learned from being a class two. There's quite a few theory exams, but then that's when you can go off and actually work in a medical center and you can treat patients. Um, so it's not actually that long, but I can understand why they've got to do it. You've got to build up the experience before you start working with, ca um, with casualties and patients. Good thing to know is while you're a medic, you will get your driving license and more than likely Pretty much all of you will get your cat C because you need your cat C to drive the uh, field ambulance, so the BFA. And you've also got things like uh, medical regiments using Boxer, Mastiff and stuff like that. So you do get a wide range of experience on different vehicles. Uh, once you are a class one, then this allows you to move away from the field uh, hospitals or medical regiments. And then that's when you can start attaching yourself to different regiments, whether that being infantry, Royal Artillery, going off to different garrisons and working with different units, Remy or whatever it is, whatever your preference is. You're not obviously always guaranteed to get your preference, um, but that's what it opens up to you. So being a medic, uh, from everyday life, from what I've seen and the people I've spoke to, you're going to be working in a unit, uh, whether that's in a defence primary health centre, if I remember what that's called, so it's basically the unit or garrison medical centre, depending on whether you're a unit um, in a small camp or whether you're now based in a garrison, which is what a lot of people are. So you're going to be working in there, conducting day-to-day -day, um, just sort of medical stuff, people who are coming in sick, and then you're going to go away on exercise with the unit, and then you're going to be the medic for that. Two very uh, attractive sort of postings or jobs that you could do within the medics, um, which could definitely attract people. And um, if I'm guessing a lot of people, most people don't know about this, is one of them is you can become a paramedic. So you have to go off and uh, apply for the course as a private or a Lance Corporal. And then at the end of it, you become a fully qualified medic. 
cancel that, you become a fully qualified paramedic. Uh, this isn't obviously always guaranteed. As you can most probably imagine, this is a very sought after uh, job role. So a lot of people do apply for it. You need to build a portfolio, send it off to a selection board, and then you get picked um, based on that. So if it's something you definitely want to do, just make sure you're switched on, you're always learning, and you're building a good portfolio from the start um, when you're joining. The second really attractive job role, uh, which is obviously, it's, you know, it's got to be attractive to a lot of people, is the Special Forces Medic. Uh, some of you might know it as the Black Serpent, but it's not called that anymore. That is basically, as a medic, you're going to get attached to one of the Special Forces, um, whether that's down in Hereford Pool um, or with SRR, and you basically be uh, a medic with them. Obviously, don't know exactly how it works. I've never gone for it but you do go off and you'll do some like sort of like briefing course, I believe. Um, and then you actually go off and do six months selection. Once you pass that six month course, you then go and get attached to say Hereford um, for a few years and working with them. I spoke to a paramedic, uh, sorry, a medic who did it years ago. Um, well, I spoke to him years ago and talking to him, he says he got to literally travel all around the world to wherever SF are going. And the courses he did were just like a lot higher than what you would do um, just being a standard medic. Yeah, you could become a paramedic and stuff like that. He says you really go in depth of what um, the skills and knowledge that you need to know. So that is definitely uh, something that would be um, attractive to a lot of people. So just make a note of that, that that is something you could do later on down in your career. What happens after that is you do normally come back um, once you hit the rank of a sergeant and then you take over as the med sergeant within a garrison uh, unit or a smaller unit and work in the med centre. But it could be a nice two, three year posting, maybe longer, I don't really know, um, but I'm sure it'd be about two, three years minimum with the amount of money and time they would have spent in you to get you trained up. So there's two really attractive uh, job roles, so you've got a paramedic or a special forces medic, or you could just be a standard medic, you could do your class twos, your class ones, and then you could go and do um, your advanced battlefield trauma, um, which is sounds pretty good. Uh, this is when you start going into um, more advanced trauma skills. I can't say the words, but it's sort of like when you start drilling into bones, um, opening up the airways, cutting up, um, open up the uh, cutting open the airway um, and allowing people to breathe um, through the airways in their neck so they've got a blocked airway. So that's what you can go and do after your class ones as well. So there's a lot of opportunities with being in the medic and talking about opportunities. Think of it this way, wherever a unit goes, wherever the British Army go, they need med medical support. Yes, you have team medics and everyone is MAT free trained within the British Army. You have to be uh, to deploy be minimum BCDT. Um, but a lot of people pretty much get team medics, but a class one is even higher than that. And then you've got your advanced trauma as well. So wherever the units go, they're gonna need a medic attached to every unit. So just think of where the British Army are. Uh, there is medical, and you can get permanent postings in places like Cyprus, Canada, uh, Falklands, and stuff like that. So it's definitely something to think of. That's it for the uh, medic to summarize then. Purbright, Winchester or Harrogate for your phase one. You're then going to go off to DMS Whittington. You could be a nurse or a HCA if you want to. We'll be doing future videos on this. If you do want to get a degree in nursing and work as a nurse, then I highly recommend doing it through the army. You'll come away as a corporal or you could go on to be a medic. Get your class twos. You're going to be like that for about six to 12 months being supervised, just watching um, over yeah, someone just watching you, seeing what skills you've learned from phase two, making sure you're not losing anything, doing anything wrong. Once they think you're ready, you're then going to go off and do your exams and a bit more in depth to become a class one. And then that's when you're able to go off and work with a patient one to one, go off to another unit, get attached to an infantry unit, work in a defense healthcare or some sort of medical center, working with patients. And then you could either apply for a paramedic, special forces medic, or you could either go on to do your Battlefield Advanced Trauma course. Hope that's been useful. Please let us know below if it has. Let us know what you want to see next. I'm trying to do all job roles. Just please give me some time to get um, information on it. There is a lot of job roles out there. And remember, you can always find uh, a lot of information on the British Army website. The link to the British Army website is in my description. There's a lot going on in a minute. So make sure you have a look over at the website, see what job roles there are, see where they're deploying. There's a lot of deployments going on, a lot of new vehicles, kit and equipment coming in as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, really helps the video and it just lets me know you're enjoying it. So thank you and I'll catch you soon.